everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel, Books My Heart, I'm Angela. Thank you so much for taking the time to check out today's video. I really appreciate it. Today I'm continuing my book discussion of a series of unfortunate events. So let's get started with The Vile Village. I also particularly like this book cover because we have Sunny, who is an infant, crawling up a rope. At this point, I just kind of go with it. She is crawled for running laps, so why can't she climb up a rope? How is that even a question that an infant has the upper body strength to climb up a rope? The book opens with Mr. Poe, Violet Klaus, and Sunny's handler trying to find them a new guardian. His last hope was their 19th cousin. I have never heard the phrase 19th cousin before in my life, but apparently their 19th cousin was Violet Klaus and Sunny's last hope for an official guardian. Instead, Mr. Poe entrusts the care for Violet Klaus and Sunny to an entire town. The town of VFD, or the village of foul devotees. Once they're in the village, a council of elders informs the children that they need to do a number of chores for the entire town, and they have to adhere to all of the village's rules. They have 19 plus thousand rules. This is why we have recently made up a new rule, Rule 19,833. It clearly states that no villains are allowed within the city limits. But rule 108 is my favorite. Unfortunately, no, Hector said. Rule 108 clearly states that the VFD library cannot contain any books that break any of the other rules. If someone in a book uses a mechanical device, for instance, that book is not allowed in the library. But there are so many rules, Klaus said. What kind of books could possibly be allowed? Not very many, Hector said, and nearly all of them are dull. There's one called The Littlest Elf, and that's probably the most boring book ever written. The library cannot have any books. If a library cannot have books, it's not a library. It's just not. And rule number two is that if anyone breaks a rule, they are burned at the stake. The children are eventually informed that Count Olaf will be burned at the stake, having been captured the previous day. The only problem is, it's not Count Olaf. And when the man who shares the last name Snicket is found dead, Count Olaf in disguise accuses the children of being the murderers. The Baudelaire's escape their prison cell and eventually meet up with the Quagmires, only to be forced to flee town. This is the first time in the series that Mr. Poe does not come to collect the children at the end of the book. Now, Violet, Klaus, and Sunny are truly on their own. Next in the series, we have the Hostel Hospital. Book 8 picks up exactly where Book 7 left off. The children go to the appropriately named Last Chance General Store in the hopes of contacting Mr. Poe. It turns out, however, the local newspaper believes the children are murderers and that everyone should be on the lookout for them. The manager of the Last Chance General Store runs them out. Of course you're murderers, the shopkeeper answered. It says so in the newspaper. There is also an aisle exclusively just for clocks in the general store. Violet, Klaus, and Sunny then go to a nearby hospital wanting to look at their records. They hope the hospital library has some answers for their many questions. Keeping with the theme of absurdity, Sunny is able to fashion keys to the hospital library using her teeth. Kenolov finds the children yet again and attempts a craniotomy on Violet, because apparently that's the next step in his evil plan. Once Violet, Klaus, and Sunny escape Kenolov's evil plan once again, they decide to hide out in the back of his car. They want to learn his location and hopefully find answers to the many mysteries surrounding them. The ninth book in a series of unfortunate events, The Carnivorous Carnival. Violet, Klaus, and Sunny were all hiding in the back of Count Olaf's car. Count Olaf and his team discuss Madame Lulu, who it turns out always tells Count Olaf exactly where to find the children. To blend in with their carnival surroundings, the children dress up as quote-unquote freaks. Sunny pretends to be a wolf baby, while Klaus and Violet pretend to be a two-headed person, Beverly and Elliot. The children then meet other quote-unquote freaks, Hugo a hunchback, Colette a contortionist, and Kevin who is ambidextrous. At one point, Kevin says, holding it in my equally strong hands makes me feel like a freak. Being ambidextrous does not make someone a freak. Violet, Klaus, and Sunny join the carnival. In the meantime, Count Olaf asks Madame Lulu if one of the Baudelaire parents is still alive, to which she responds that she believes one of them is living up in the mountains. To show his thanks to Madame Lulu, Count Olaf gives her a hungry pack of lions. Apparently, flowers and chocolates were outdated. Not surprisingly, Madame Lulu was not a real psychic. When she catches Violet, Klaus, and Sunny in her caravan, Madame Lulu explains everything. The Baudelaire's were basically interested in learning if one of their parents really was alive, leading to them concocting another plan to try and head to the mountains. 
Before they can do this, however, Esme, Count Olaf's evil girlfriend, wants to kill Madame Lulu. Violet, Klaus, and Sunny may have eluded Count Olaf's lions, but a few other characters were not as lucky. In true unfortunate fashion, the carnival burned to the ground. And Chapter 5 is unique in the series, having a repeating opening passage. And the opening to Chapter 5 appears twice because Snicket is discussing deja vu. If you have ever experienced something similar that feels strangely familiar, as if the exact same thing has happened to you before, then you are experiencing what the French call deja vu. For the first time in the series, the book ends with Violet, Klaus, and Sunny being separated. Violet and Klaus are left by the side of the road, while Sunny is taken hostage by the villains. Be sure to stay tuned for next week's video, in which I finish discussing a series of unfortunate events. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, have a great reading day.